In metabolism, we keep talking about energy production, energy release, and so on. So, uh, earlier on, we talked about uh, one of the major uh, components for uh, metabolism, with it and which is enzyme. The other one is uh, I've mentioned before, it is energy. So now we're uh, we're going to look into how energy is produced in the cells. Okay, so nutrient molecules like all molecules have energy associated with electrons that form bonds between their atom. When, when the electrons are spread throughout the molecule, uh, this energy is difficult for the cells to use. Um, uh, various reactions in catabolic pathway concentrate the energy into bonds of ATP uh, which serve as a convenient uh, energy carrier. So ATP carries the energy. And ATP is generally, generally uh, referred to as having high energy bonds, hmm. or better known as uh, unsta unstable bond. So although the amount of energy in those bonds is not uh, large, but it can be released quickly and easily. Okay, so that is about uh, the ATP uh, and the energy bond. Um, so what are the aspects of energy production? Um, so there are a few ways of how energy is produced in the cells. Number one is through the oxidation reduction reaction. The other two is the mechanism of the ATP generation. First, uh, let's have a look at the oxidation reduction reaction or redox reaction. Okay, so what we have here is uh, a reaction whereby we have molecule A and molecule B and then producing uh, oxidize uh, A and reduce B. Okay, so what we have here, molecule A uh, loses electron to molecule B. So, so electron A, uh, molecule A sort of uh, donor the electron to molecule B. And that molecule B become the electron is the electron acceptor. So in this process, molecule A has undergone <coughs> oxidation whereby molecule B has gone through reduction okay so this is what happened to molecule a molecule a is um, re, uh, is oxidized whereby molecule b is reduced okay molecule a is called oxidized when uh, the electron is being uh, removed or donated and molecule B is become uh, reduced when it is accepting electron. So oxidation reduction are couple uh, reactions. So each time one uh, substance is oxidized, another is simultaneously reduced. Okay, so. Uh, in other words, reduction will gain electrons, whereby the molecule is reduced. Okay, oxidation, uh, whereby oxidation will donate electrons, whereby the molecule is oxidized. So reducing agent um, is actually uh, a, redu uh, a reducing agent is called a reductant or a reducer. Okay. It is an element such as calcium or compound that loses or donate an electron to another chemical species in a redox chemical reaction. So oxidizing agent is uh, a reactant that removes electron from other reactant during a redox uh, reaction. So the oxidizing agent typically takes this electron for itself, thus gaining electrons and being reduced. So an oxidizing agent is thus an electron acceptor. So with that statement, so you can say that 
So in here, which one is reducing agent? Reducing agent is this one, this guy here, whereby oxidizing agent is this guy here. In many cellular oxidation, electrons and protons, um, in this case are hydrogen ions, are removed at the same time. So equivalent to removal of hydrogen atom. Okay, so this is the same. So we're talking about uh, when we say uh, uh, electron or proton being removed. Uh, so it is the same as the removal of all the hydrogen atom. Okay, for example, NAD, NADH become NAD. So it's a removal of the hydrogen atom from the NADH. Oxidation involves the loss of hydrogen atom. Okay, so NADH become NAD. So that is an oxidation process. So this is also a call, a known as dehydrogenation. So another uh, figure representation uh, representing the uh, redox reaction. So uh, for example, uh, so in this case, organic molecule is oxidized by the loss of two hydrogen atoms. Okay. So when a molecule is oxidized, that means it loses uh, proton or electron. So in this case, also hydrogen atom. Okay. For example. Uh, and then uh, a molecule of NAD plus coenzyme is reduced. So reduce when a molecule is reduced is accepting the hydrogen. Uh, to, uh, uh, note, to note that NAD plus can accept two electron and one hydrogen atom. And then the other extra hydrogen is released to the environment. Okay, if it's in the, this case two hydrogen, um, uh, so in this case, uh, this uh, organic molecule um, lose hydrogen atom, uh, two hydrogen and two electron. So uh, NAD plus can only accept uh, two electrons and one hydrogen and the other extra hydrogen is released to the environment. So the reduced uh, coenzyme NADH contain more energy than the NAD+. So this is the reduced uh, coenzyme NADH. Okay, so it has more energy now than the NAD+, because now it has uh, electron as electron carrier. Okay, because it's accepting, accepting the, the electron. So cells use biological redox reaction in catabolic in catabolism to extract energy from nutrient molecules. So these, uh, the energy stored in the nutrients is the, in the form of protons and electrons are removed in stepwise manner and transferred to ATP. Okay, So that is the uh, oxidative phosphorylation in the electron transport chain to produce elect, uh, ATP. Okay, So this is NAD NADH is an important electron carrier, uh, important uh, molecules that carry electron, uh, which has high uh, energy. The other mechanism to produce energy uh, in cells is through the generation of ATP. Okay, we know that ATP is carrying um, energy bonds which are the phosphate groups uh, that carries energy okay uh, and that those are high energy bond that can be readily be broken into uh, really uh, broken to release usable energy so the high energy bond that attaches to the third phosphate contains the energy stored in these reactions so when when so in this case uh, we have ATP right? We have ATP here. So the the third phosphate here uh, can be readily uh, be removed. Okay. So when this phosphate is removed, uh, energy is released, 
an addition of phosphate phosphate to a chemical compound is called phosphorylation. For example, if you have glucose become glucose 6-phosphate, uh, uh, the process is called phosphorylation. Okay, so uh, organism uses three mechanism of phosphorylation to generate ATP from ADP. The first uh, mechanism of, of, of phosphorylation is the substrate level phosphorylation. It is when ATP is generated when high energy phosphate, uh, phosphate, uh, free phosphate is directly transferred from a phosphorylated substrate to ADP. So the phosphate from uh, one molecule is transferred to ADP. Now, then you have the molecule of ATP. And the phosphate in the substrate acquired it, its energy during the earlier reaction in which the substrate itself was oxidized. The other, uh, the second mechanism is the, through the oxidative phosphorylation. So the electron in the uh, electron carriers, NAD+, FAD, uh, will be uh, passed through a series of different electron carriers uh, to molecules of oxygen. So this is electron acceptor. Okay, we have oxygen or other inorganic uh, or organic molecules as electron acceptor. Um, and this process is, uh, is actually called electron transport chain. Okay, through those process, then uh, energy uh, ATP is produced through ATP uh, by the ATP synthesis. So the, uh, the transfer of electrons from one electron carrier to the next to the next electron carrier will release energy and some is used to uh, generate ATP from ADP through the process called chemiosmosis. Chemiosmosis is the process whereby you have different gradient of, of electron uh, in the cells from one, uh, one side to another side. So this is um, uh, involving uh, ATP synthesis. So the final one is the photophosphorylation. Uh, the transfer of phosphate uh, to photophosphorylation. So this involve uh, or, or done in uh, photosynthetic microbes, photosynthetic cells. So uh, in photosynthesis, the sugars are synthesized with energy of light from the energy poor building blocks, carbon dioxide and water. And then the photophosphorylation starts by converting the light energy to chemical energy of ATP and NADPH, which in turn are used to synthesize organic molecules. Uh, and and this in, in this photophosphorylation, electron transport chain is also involved. So uh, in this metabolism topic, you have learned about the metabolism. Uh, you have learned about the enzymes and also uh, about uh, ATP as the energy. Okay, so now I would like to summarize about the whole topic of metabolism. So these are the key points that you had you need to remember, or uh, or at least um, you should actually by by reading these statements or points you should then remember what are the things that I've taught before this. Okay, now uh, first we talk about metabolism. It is the sum of all biochemical reactions. And then number two, it's about anabolic reaction that require um, energy and it is a process of synthesis, uh, biosynthesis of large molecules from smaller molecules. And then catabolism is the energy releasing uh, metabolic reaction which degrade or break down large molecules into smaller ones. And then we have enzymes. Um, which are proteins or RNA that catalyze the react biochemical reactions. Uh, and the binding of the substrate uh, by an enzyme makes possible uh, both either bond forming or bond breaking reactions, uh, depending on the pathway involved in metabolism. Uh, enzymes may utilize cofactors as carriers or activators for the functions. Okay, uh, Enzymes are classified and named according to the kinds of reaction that they catalyze. Um, 
Next, all metabolic require, uh, processes require constant expenditure of some usable energy. Uh, chemical energy is the currency that runs the metabolic processes of the cell. Uh, so in this case, it is ATP that is the currency or metabolic money for the cells. Um, okay, uh, chemical energy is obtained from the electrons of nutrient molecules through catabolism. Okay, energy is extracted from nutrient molecule by redox reaction. So you've learned about redox reaction. Um, and then redox reaction is often facilitated by specialist carrier molecules such as NAD+. Uh, and finally, ATP is an important energy uh, molecule of the cells. Uh, it donates free energy to anabolic reactions and it's continuously generated by three phosphorylation process such as uh, which is uh, substrate level phosphorylation oxidative phosphorylation and photophosphorylation okay so that's all for uh, topic metabolism so this is uh, the task for you and uh, number three so try to answer this question okay student number 14 should answer this question so i'll, I'll say student number 14 to uh, answer a 15B, 16C, 17D, and uh, 18E. All right. Okay. Thank you very much.